Well, hello, ladies, gentlemen, and whoever or whatever you identify as. Welcome back to the Shed of Dread and welcome to another video. Right then, as always, goggles on because we've got another article to read. It's a good one. Let's see. But I, 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 you know, I hope you're enjoying watching these as much as I'm actually really enjoying doing them because I quite like this. It's enjoyable because, as I said before, I don't read the articles before I do them so then I can react to what I think straight off the bat without any pre-script because I know some people may think well I don't script any of my videos it's just from here and up here sometimes but this is old now and it's it's not very reliable any case let's crack on love and thunder star Tessa Thompson says portrayal of Valkyrie's bisexuality was a big topic of a conversation between her and director Takia Watia as I said if I pronounce it wrong I do apologize I'm not brilliant at pronouncing people's names I just Read it. According to Thor of a Thunder Star, Tessa Thompson, she and director Takia Watsia spent a fair amount of time on set discussing the intricacies, fuck, that's a bloody word for this time in the afternoon, of how to properly portray Valkyrie's bisexuality in the upcoming Marvel sequel. Why? Why does that matter? Why, why does that have to be in? Why do you think it's so important? Because no one else gives a shit. And there was a thing about uh, here in the con our country called GB News. There was um, a, a bisexual person on, and they were getting really, really miffed when people went, "I'm bisexual," and people just went, "I don't care." Well, you should. Well, why should I? I don't care. It's the same things about you know people being gay, etc. No one cares, and that's a good thing. That's genuinely a good thing. You quite rightly fought for your rights to be treated as equal to every other human being on this planet. And that's correct and right. And you've won those rights. So now, people don't give a shit because you're equal. So no one's going to give a shit. So no one gives a shit whether characters in films are bisexual or not. No one cares. It's not important. It's only important to virtue signaling dickwads like people like this. And I never understand it. And they seem to think this is helping them, when in reality, it immediately just hinders them. Because a lot of people go, oh, for can't be asked." Thompson opened up about this conversation regarding Valkyrie's LGBT plus alphabet identity during a recent interview with Yahoo Entertainment. Jesus Christ, Yahoo's still going. Wow. Published on June 29, telling the news outlet that we talked about it a lot. It was a big topic of conversation. Why? Why waste time on something that no one cares about? Only you. Oh, I'll tell you what. Because I think it's rightful that there is a real want in audience to see characters to be very clearly queer or, or alphabet inside this space, as the actress said, who is bisexual herself. Aha! <laughs> so now we get it. I want to be represented. Because I'm bisexual, so everybody needs to know this. No one cares tessa no one gives a flying monkey's shit that you're bisexual if you are well okay so what any case and i think it's hugely important to have representation oh god why no one cares all you're doing with these words is making it people going oh you know what if this is what it's going to be like and that's why people won't go and see your movie. That's why it fails. Because you don't do yourself... You think you're doing yourself a favour. Because you, you're representing these people. Who are, in reality, sorry to say, quite a small minority of society. So I'm not being nasty. But that's the way it is. And do you think by representing these people and look at us, that you're going to attract these people in? People don't give a shit about that. They just want to know if your film's good or not. But if you're doing that, you're making a lot of people go, well, if you're going to be banging on about that, I can't be bothered. Lightyear, for instance. I'll just point to Lightyear. If you hadn't mentioned it was an inclusion of a lesbian kissing that, which isn't, no one cares. Well, no one cares, but you'll show it in Western society, but when you then send the movie somewhere else, you'll take it out. It says a lot, doesn't it, really? She continues... And also, as humans, I think we're not defined by our sexuality, but who, but who we, are, but by who we love. No, no, it's not. 
And so sometimes I think about I think to hang on to a narrative completely on its on that is a way of actually diminishing the humanity of the character because you don't allow them to be anything else. No, that's in your warped, fucked up little mind. That's what you think people want. That's what you think. Without even realising that no one cares. Apart from the tiny little minority of complete raging lunatics that live in the world. No one cares. However, despite the special care and attention given to the subject, both Watia and herself, Thompson has revealed that the film ultimately spends no time exploring Valkyrie's love life. So in other words, I've come on here, banging on about bag bisexuality, I need representation, we need to have the conversation, we've had a good conversation. Did it appear in, appear in the film? No, it didn't. Why? It just didn't. What a, what a pointless talk. What a pointless article. What you're doing is, I'm bisexual, I need to know everybody needs to be bisexual, and that needs to be represented in the film, even though it's not. But in any case, we'll carry on. Noting that when a character's sexuality is brought into the spotlight, it becomes the only storyline, Thompson asserts itself. This rang true. Particularly in a movie like this, where you don't frankly have a lot of room for storyline. Well, you do, but it's a storyline that no one cares. And that is it, because you make it that. Because by going, it's about this, this, and this representation or that you turn people people just go oh, well if that's what the film's going to be about i don't want to know and you've lost it that's why films where these are mentioned the audience is down and then when people go to see it and see it included in the film it goes down even more because people don't want that they just want to have a film that's just a bit fun so there's a lot of conversation in terms of how to treat that with Valkyrie, she added. And I felt really good, personally, about what we got to do. I hope that she's a character that fans continue to connect with. We have a lot of time to explore her in all of humanity. Well, you've just said there isn't time to do that, so make your mind up. I think, here, you're just talking uh, virtue signaling bullshit, to be fair. The actress concluded, but whether or not she finds love in this movie doesn't mean she's not still a fabulous queer character that's open to finding love when it makes sense. No, because you've just admitted it's not in the film. So you can bang on about that as much as you like, but it doesn't matter. Interesting, a variation of this explanation was reportedly given by Watson to Thompson during the film in Goth Thor Ragnarok as as to why a scene which would have provided explicit on-screen confirmation of Valkyrie's bisexuality, rather than leaving the fact for the film's cast and crew to pronounce in interviews, was ultimately left on the cutting room floor, because no one wants it. Thompson even summoned the courage to pitch what you are making a Valkyrie bisexual. In other words, make it like me because I'm all important, wrote Rolling Stone reporter Amy Nicholson in a summary of the conversation she had with the actress during an interview. She convinced Watia to shoot a glimpse of a woman walking out of Valkyrie's bedroom. He kept it in the film as long as he could, but eventually the bit had to be cut because it's distracted from the scene's vital exposition. In other words, it ruined it. At least he had the sense to understand that bit. There were things that we talked about we could we allowed to exist in the characterization but maybe not explicit in the film thompson told nicholson there's a great shot of me falling back from one of my sisters who's just been slain in my mind that was my lover now that in your mind but no one else saw it like that at all i know the sign you mean when she's falling back she, that's the loss of her battle brother a battle sister you may think it's that no one else did but you had to make it that because all the things that you wanted to do were, were, were cut out. Thor Love and Thunder hits theatres on July 7th. Uh, I think that's it's 8th here in the UK. And it says here, what do you make of Thor's, Thor, Thompson's insight into Valkyrie's depiction of Thor, Lo, Thor? can't speak today, Love and Thunder. Let us know. In the comment section down below because it's there for you now remember ladies and gentlemen it, there's no right or wrong do you think that this is just her projecting what she wants but in reality ultimately it never entered the films because perhaps they realized that's not such a good idea or oh, i don't know um do you think the sexuality of a character in a film is make or break for you and whether in reality it matters because in my mind it really doesn't and in fact, on many occasions, I find it more distracting.
from the film itself than just getting on with it. And if you want to see an example of how to do something like that with it, all races, sexualities and that, watch The Expanse. They do it perfectly. It's not patronising. It's not forced. It's just the way it is. That character is what they are and everybody just gets on with it because that's how you tell a good story. When you make it about the story and not about virtual signalling your own sexuality and trying to force it in the film because apparently that's important. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a fat guy sitting in his shed surrounded by his toys. If you enjoyed this video, you can do what Dave the Thumb here does. Thank you, Dave. If you want to see some more videos like what I always do, there's a subscription button right down there. Little icon, hover, pops up, subscription, click, done, in. Eternally grateful. Thank you very much. Love you. Love you, love you. If you have done that, uh, you can then... If you want a bit more excitement and entertainment to that 30 seconds, you could click this, the, the little bell and that'll give you a notification I've done another video. And that would be nice. Um, even though YouTube have been turning it off for whatever reason. And I've had that happen. Subscribers of mine have told me that that's happened to them. And as a subscriber to many other people's channels, I've had that where I used to get subscription notices that I didn't. And when I went on there, they turned the bell off. I don't know why. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And with that, and as always, and until the next one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for your time. It is always much appreciated.